Well, as I mentioned in the comment on the uh, community page, uh, I gave notice to the logistics company I've been associated with uh, since uh, October, I guess, uh, 22. Um, no money there, too many restrictions, too many rules. And as I, as I mentioned before, the worst part is that it's very hard to be competitive um, with other brokers' quotes when I have to, you know, pay a lot to the logistics company, right? So let's say if I just want to, you know, uh, hundred bucks, I cannot do that because the logistics company wants their share, which depends on the uh, total amount. Like the bigger the amount, the more money they, they require is minimum, right? And so that thing works fine when you're just, uh, you know, shipping um, pallets, you know, or, or I don't know, buckets of paint or just, you know, some partials. But if it's like a big load, you know, 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars, then that um, percentage they require uh, becomes a, you know, big number, right? And so, and that's why, you know, it's hard to stay competitive. So each time I try to s send in a quote, when somebody asks me f uh, for a quote, uh, oh yeah, we found a cheaper carrier. So since October, I did two, two loads. That's it. One, and, uh, and uh, what's funny is that both customers were, um, they found me on YouTube. Like the first guy, he was watching my videos when I was a trucker and he bought a trailer and he just needed some help moving, um, you know, like a tilt and load utility trailer from, I think, Washington to Texas, right? That was my first customer. The second customer was also found me through YouTube that shipping that big forklift, which turned turned into a disaster because the carrier, you know, the carrier was bad. And then what's funny is that that carrier, they fired, they fired the dispatcher. And then they started sending me emails like, hey, you know, we have trucks available. You know, would be, would love to work with you. I mean, you, you, you kidding me, right? Uh, I go to, I go to the account and this TMS and it's, do not use dnu do not use as per and then the person's name in the corporate office and that's another thing like this tms right the most stupid piece of software i ever seen you know transportation management software i talked to this lady uh, i know who's an independent broker and i said you know she's been working on her own for what like six months I said, did you get any TMS? And she says, uh, honestly, no. <laughs> I said, wait, so how do you issue uh, load confirmations? And she says, I have a spreadsheet set up on in Excel, you know, or open office, whatever. And I just manually change the fields because she's by herself, right? So uh, how many customers do you think she gets a month, right? So that's exactly what i was doing when i was a trucker right i just had a, a, a bill of lading uh, created in open office or word whatever and i had an invoice and then when i had a new customer i would just open the previous bill of lading change the number but all my contact info was there i just i would just change the shipper name and address consignee name and address uh, logistics company and then just type in manually the you know the load description click print and that's it so no complicated stupid tms or, you know dispatch software you don't need that when you do like one two loads a month you don't need a tms and so yeah finally i had it i i send the uh, email to uh, my former boss i said that's it this is your notification that I'm quitting today, what, July 4th? 
the, like our contract requires 14 days but I already disconnected the phone you know I had a, like a desktop VOIP phone disconnected it now I have to send it to him because uh, he gave it to me for free but it's a used phone um, so yeah that did not work out so I might I still can do it in Canada surprisingly uh, you do not need any licensing or any special insurance to be a freight broker in Canada right so so right now if somebody calls me and say hey I want to ship you know like a dozer from Calgary to Saskatoon Saskatchewan can you help us yeah I just need to find a carrier right and uh, I can do it I don't need any registration I don't need any MC numbers you know DOT numbers and because this is Canada but to uh, move loads in and out of US I would have to register as a broker MC number I still have my carrier MC number which is uh, inactive because canceling it uh, entirely is just a huge pain in the butt so I just put it on hold and it's sitting there I'm not paying any fees but I would need a different uh, broker MC number if I want to move loads into and out of US and I would need that bond or that broker insurance what is it like 75,000 bucks so I think you, the premium is about a thousand dollars US a month and then of course I would need access to uh, a load board or, or a couple of load boards because right now my load board access was free but as I quit the company in 10 days I would I would lose access so let's say if I need to post a load to find a truck it's gonna be it's gonna be problematic because I only have probably 40 40 carriers in my own little database uh, on MailChimp where I can you know contact them now speaking of American carriers I got an interesting text message from uh, you guys probably know uh, Frontier Specialized the guy Mitch and surprisingly he was I thought he was doing good surprisingly he texted me saying that he's thinking of getting out <laughs> so I'm guessing he wants to go back to construction because he was a, a general contractor basically building houses but he was complaining that it's it's too stressful and I, I said what do you think uh, trucking is less stressful and he says well whenever I watch your videos you're always smiling you're happy and I said yeah like what do you expect me to do you know when I'm shooting a video but definitely trucking is uh, the same or maybe even worse no I think it's less because you know you don't deal with inspections like every every two three hours or every day right like you were saying that with construction you know first off customers change their minds all the time let's say somebody hired him to build a house right and then they change their mind where they want the kitchen where they want the pool okay we want the you know uh, walls be of this different color right and then he had constant inspections from all these inspectors right like electricity you know gas uh, furnace all this kind of stuff and he says man this was just driving me nuts you know and so uh, and that's why he decided to become a trucker because he thought it would be easier but now he's saying that there's no money he says there's no money in trucking I said well at least at least um, you can get good money for your uh, equipment because I think what he has like two or three trucks okay hold on somebody is uh, somebody is uh, texting me here because I'm supposed to have a photo shoot for the first time in my life I'm somebody hired me to do a photo shoot some girl some girl um, some girl okay hold on Wednesday just wait, wait a second I just have to answer her because she she thought we were shooting today but no we are, we're meeting tomorrow in Chinatown to do like a photo shoot I'm guessing she just needs some pics for her Instagram and stuff like that hold on one second 
Okay, so it's been confirmed. I'm meeting the girl. I'm guessing she's a university student or something. Tomorrow somewhere in uh, Chinatown. Chinatown in Calgary. And she says, near the bridge. She says, uh, Rio front near the bridge. Like, what bridge? There's like 10 bridges over there, but I'm guessing it's the Center Street Bridge. But I'm very excited. So the money is... You know, the amount is laughable, but somebody is hiring me to do, to take their portraits. You know, I'm very excited. So it might be a start of a new career. Um, speaking about the career. So now that I'm, my freight brokerage uh, is on, on pause, uh, I do intend to uh, register the broker MC number. Uh, probably closer to fall because first I have to make some money and uh, so this tomorrow this lady is paying me 75 bucks for a couple of hours of shooting and then uh, July 11th and, and 13th I do two days of shooting at the Calgary Stampede and this one pays me 200 bucks Canadian a day so I'm gonna make $400 um, basically we're shooting a party uh, stampede stampede related party and in other news I keep checking you know I have this timed auction in Toronto happening right now so lot number 5771 I keep checking it you know it started with zero then five then ten dollars so now it's at 475 uh, 475 bucks and these guys right so I send them a message I said could you please add pictures of the hoses because all the, there's like a bunch of there's like 40, 40 uh, photos but they're very small and I'm looking at them right now and they only show like the outside, the seat, the pedals, the controls, and a lot of pictures of an old dusty engine, tires. Uh, but there's nothing about the hoses, right? And I, I sent them a message actually. I found the email, found the email address of the uh, Bolton auction. It was on my invoice. And I said, guys, here's a couple of my, my old pictures. I said the best part about this Clark C500 forklift is that it looks like it, it's been refurbished a few years back because all hydraulic hoses and connectors near the mast look brand new. But yet you have zero pictures of that. And so I added my own like three or four pictures that show like a close up of the hoses. And actually yesterday they replied, they said, uh, okay, we, we, uh, we got your message. We're going to forward these pictures to the uh, yard equipment team. But I've been checking. I don't see them. I still see the old photos. And I'm like, I'm really convinced that if they would add those uh, host pictures, it would really help the uh, bidding process. But for now, we're bidding. Bidding stops on Thursday. Today is Tuesday. Bidding stops on Thursday at 10.14 a.m. Eastern Time. And of course, as with all Ritchie Brothers auctions, this is unreserved auction. Which means that in theory, like right now, the high bid is 475 Canadian. So if, some, if nobody bids higher than that this forklift will sell for 475 right so and i would have lost probably 7000 canadian because so far i think it was like 7500 canadian plus the delivery to the auction which was another 700 so basically so far i spent probably eight grand on the forklift new battery uh delivery uh two months of storage uh, delivery back to the auction I don't even count the flight and the hotels 
when I flew over there because that was kind of like, you know, YouTube video related so I can deduct those expenses. And in other news, I don't know if you guys would laugh at me or not, but uh, there have been a lot of comments about, hey, you know, get back behind the wheel, right? Um, get a truck, you know, get your trucker's license. <laughs> And so the good news is that I am getting behind the wheel. Uh, the bad news is that it's not a truck. It's not a bus. It's my blue Jeep, my blue Jeep Compass. So um, I'm signing up with uh, Uber Eats. Um, I've been working with them for a week, trying to get, you know, approved just basically to you know, work a couple of, uh, a few hours, maybe, you know, like five to eight at night. Uh, truth to be told, you know, always wanted to be a, a, a cab driver when I was a kid, right? So my dream was either a long haul truck driver or a railroad engineer or a pilot or a taxi driver. And so I tried all of these, well, except for, for the pilot, because one of my eyes, I think uh, the, right, the right eye was like 90% from, from the day I was born. And so they wouldn't allow me to be a pilot, but I did work on the railroad. I was a long haul trucker. And the, the last childhood's dream I never fulfilled was a taxi driver. And I still remember I was like 22, 23, I was, I, I was ready to quit the, the uh, university in uh, Kirovograd, Ukraine, Soviet Union, because I already spoke English, like the way I'm, I'm speaking it now after like three years at the university, like the, the studies were great. Uh, they were really focused on the language, you know, and, so, and it was a uh, pedagogics, right? So I was supposed to be a teacher which I never wanted to be. So I was ready to quit after like three years. I, I, I achieved my goal, learn English. And I, I went to a local taxi, taxi cab company in Kirovograd. And I said, hey, uh, I'd like to be a taxi cab driver, please. And they said, uh, how many years of commercial driving experience have you got? And basically, what kind of license do you have? And back in Russia, they had the same stupid system as here in Alberta. Like, if you drive your car, you can get a class five license right here. But that does not allow you to drive a cab or a bus or even like a five ton truck. Like for that, you need to have a commercial license, which is at least class four. So basically, the lower the number, the... Um, the more vehicles you can drive. So class five, basically I can drive my own uh, Jeep and surprisingly I can drive a delivery van for Amazon because all they're asking for is class five. But if I wanna be, let's say, an escort pilot driver or if I wanna drive like a delivery, five ton delivery truck or, you know, like three ton uh, tilt and load tow truck, I need a commercial license. And I was resisting this ever since I came to Alberta because that means that you need to do medicals every two years. So I'm 61. I hate doctors. I don't do. I don't want to do medicals every two years, right? And uh, and so yeah. So I went back then over there in Russia. It was the same thing. You had one kind of license, which right there in black and white on on your driver's license, it would say not for hire. So you cannot work for money. You can only drive your own personal vehicle. And I'm guessing that's how the governments uh, make money, right? Because this guy, I talked to the uh, recruiter, you know, the personnel uh, manager, and he says, you're like, you're kidding me, right? You have a regular, I think it was B, it was called Class B back in like 80s in Russia. Class B was you know, personal vehicle only. And he says, man, we have like people lined up, you know, like waiting in, 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 in the waiting line to get on board. So, and they have two, three years of truck experience. So he says, 
And so I said, what do I do? And he said, well, if I were you and you really want to be a taxi cab driver, I would go to a trucking school, get your class C, which in Russia class C was basically you can drive um, like a 10 ton truck, like, a, you know, like a dump truck, you know, delivery truck. And that was commercial. And with that one, you can drive a taxi as well, because taxi, of course, is much smaller than a dump truck. And he says, uh, if you want to be a taxi cab driver and you're serious about this, uh, just go to the trucking school, get your class C license, drive a truck for a couple of years, then come back here and we'll talk. And I'm like, holy moly, like I'm, I'm a student at the university. So this guy is telling me to quit everything and become a trucker. And honestly, I never wanted to drive a truck in Russia because trucks were ugly, old, roads were bad. So I only became a trucker when I moved to Canada, right? Because trucks here are much nicer. And so I never, ever was able to work as a taxi cab driver. Now here in Alberta, if this was Ontario, I would be able to do it. But here in Alberta, because they have these stupid classes, right? So class five, I cannot do Uber X or Uber taxi. I cannot carry passengers because for that you need class four commercial. Whereas if this was Ontario, class G allows you to drive trucks, small cars. They don't distinguish, you know, for hire, not for hire. So Ontario has a much better system, in my opinion, than here. Here it's like 200 year old system, you know, where they have all these stupid classes. So like if I'm driving my own car, why I cannot drive a taxi? You know, what's the difference? You know, just OK, I'll pay for extra insurance. But no, to, to, to carry passengers, you need class four. And of course, that triggers, you know, medicals every two years. So I said, forget it. So I looked at Uber. I like Uber because I, I use Uber a lot myself. I said, OK, what else can I do with Uber if I cannot carry passengers? And of course, there's Uber Eats, right? So food delivery. And cool thing about that is that it's totally flexible. You can click that go button. Uh, Any time, by the way, let me check because I signed up like I started uploading all the documents uh, Friday and uh, everything went OK. Like my driver's license, my insurance, uh, the background check, but they got stuck on driver's abstract. You know, I got the driver's abstract. It's just one page document, right? Had to pay what, like 45 bucks at the uh, registry, you know, DOT office. They keep telling me like on the app, I uploaded the app. They say, uh, please upload page number two. <laughs> I said, guys, it's a one page document. And they said under review. So what are you what exactly are you are you reviewing? There's like two lines of text over here. It says um, it says uh, current demerit points zero suspended. No outstanding reinstatement conditions. Nothing. Um, basically criminal charges demerit points. No information to report. So there's nothing. It's clean. But the, the date it was issued, like the license, when I got my license in Alberta, was uh, October 27th. And these guys require three-year driving record. And maybe that's, that's what the problem is, you know? Like, they don't see any records, but it's only from October 22. And I do have my... Uh, Ontario um, driver's abstract, which I did in, I think it was August. Yeah, I did it in August when my insurance was about to renew in Ontario. And so I have that on, on my computer, but they're not asking me for that. It just says, you know, whenever I look at the, at the app, you see this? It, it says not ready to go unable to go online because with uber eats 
you know once everything is cool you just hit that go button and it means that you're online you're ready to, to take orders but here it says unable to go online and it says your documents uh, are being reviewed because I, I, I uploaded them again like over here everything is cool everything is green you know like um, driver's license check uh, profile photo check proof of work eligibility where they want to see your social insurance number check vehicle information check vehicle insurance check so the only thing that is still shows like a little picture of a clock under review is Alberta driver abstract and so I even you know chatted with the support I said guys what's going on why is it taking so long oh well technically it can take up to five seven days business days and I said well you're asking me for page two the document has only one page and the guy says well for page two you can you can upload the copy of page one <laughs> so instead of doing that I, I I took a photo of the reverse of the reverse um, page where it just has some you know printed text you know like how do you how do you go about uh, dealing with a DOT or, or registry? And we're still being under review. And so then I, I was uh, I was having a lunch today at my favorite uh, Afghan Taj Taj uh, place, you know, with, where they have all these nice kebabs and, and stuff like that. And so I told him, I said, hey, I'm waiting for Uber Eats to approve me. And I, I said, do you guys have uber eats here if somebody wants to order your food because i like your food you know and they said no we only have doordash and he says actually uh, we've been hearing that doordash has been becoming very popular in canada even uh, more popular than skip the dishes where skip the dishes is a purely canadian uh, outfit but doordash uber eats of course it's you know it's international they, they have them in the states they have them in canada right and so this guy says DoorDash, okay. And so I went online when I got home. Went online and it took like I don't know ten minutes. No, hold on, maybe fifteen minutes to fill out all the info, like you know my name, email address, phone number. Uh, and then they wanted a copy of the driver's license and the second ID, like passport. And then they switch you over to they use a third party company for background check and that one says you need to you need to do a video call with one of our uh, team members okay I click that and we start chatting with that person and and he says I'm gonna send you a link to this special website where you'll be able to use your iMac camera you know and so yeah, it sends me a link. I click on that link. Boom, we are, you know, online. I click yes, yes, yes. Basically, allow allow them to use my camera, and my microphone, and then uh, a few seconds later, I I can see that this guy is online because I see his little picture that like there's two of us online in that little room, and I said, can you hear me? He says, yeah. And he says, please show me a, a close of your driver's license. I show him my driver's license, you know, like right like next to the camera. And then he says, okay, uh, second ID. So I show him my passport. And of course, open with my, you know, with my picture and, and, and the info. And, uh, and he says, yeah, that's fine. That's all. Okay. And then I go back to the, to the website for DoDash. They said, Basically, all this was done on the computer because it's way easier. And I have a bunch of files already stored, you know, like my driver's license, my passport. But they said from that point on, you have to you have to work on your phone, on your mobile device. And they said, OK, download the uh, please download the app. And so I downloaded the app. I created a password. I logged in. And they said are you ready to start delivering like what <laughs> so
So, um, yeah, so basically I, I am at, look at this. I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a Sergey. Uh, background check completed. Uh, bank account added so I can get money. Uh, number three is complete first delivery. And then there's a red button that says get started. And I tried that before and it said, well, it's not very busy in your area. And there was another button that says schedule. Like if you'd like to schedule automatic like online presence in the future, click here. But I mean, it's amazing that, you know, Uber, Uber Eats, it's so freaking slow. It's just unbelievable. We're just based on the feedback from my favorite restaurant. I was able to sign up with DoorDash. And now they're saying they're sending me a welcome kit, which I'm thinking is going to include, uh, you know, one of those uh, ugly insulated bags. And there's, a, I think, a sticker for your car, like, you know, DoorDash or something like that. But it's amazing. Like, DoorDash is so much quicker, easier. It's, like, much more efficient. But they do say that Uber Eats is, is a bit better. Um, I don't know. I never tried anything like this before. This is my first time because I do need to start making money. And I'm still... Oh, by the way, and I, I did order... Let me just actually track a parcel here. I did I did pay uh, 55 bucks of my own money for a nice um, nice uh, insulated bag because it was getting lots of reviews. Yes, yeah, like a big bag, you know, we can put like two, three orders. And, and so, yeah, so the plan now is, I'm sorry if you guys disappointed, but I do like driving, you know, especially a brand new car like this. I don't want to put too many kilometers or miles on it. And actually that's what people were saying online when I was doing all this research. They're saying that actually when you do like Uber X, like taxi, you're going to add a lot of miles to your vehicle, right? I don't want to do that. I just want to do it part time, a couple of times a week, maybe like five to eight or 11 to one, you know? And I do love driving, especially when you don't have to deal with passengers. And so now I this uh, insulated bag is coming today. And I thought I would be starting with Uber Eats, but Uber Eats takes forever. And what's surprising is that DoorDash never even asked me for, they never asked me for proof of insurance. And they never asked me for a picture of my car. And they never asked me for my own picture. No, wait, they did ask me for my own picture. No, wait, no. They, yeah, so they didn't ask me for proof of insurance, no picture of the car, no no picture of me. And, and of course, I have all these. Like, my car is insured because that's obligatory in Canada. But Uber Eats had all these steps, like, where they required much more information, you know. Um... But so, yeah, now technically, and I know most people, that's what they say. You know, I watched a bunch of videos about this online. Like there's a couple of guys here in Calgary doing this. And they were saying that the, the best tip is not to get stuck on one service only. You cannot make enough money just, let's say, doing only Uber Eats or only Skip the Dishes or only uh, DoorDash because uh, one um app will become slow and then the other one will get busy and so they all have multiple apps so you, you have to kind of like a juggle right and so i thought okay special since you know that afghan restaurant guy said hey we, we don't do uber eats we do a doordash and so i went home and i in half an hour i have doordash available so i can of course now it's 1 15 and I'm still waiting for my bag. So the plan is, I'm guessing tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna, I'm gonna try maybe at uh, lunchtime, like maybe start like uh, 11 to one. To me, it's interesting. It's same as a taxi, except you don't have any grumpy drunk passengers. 
that puke in your car you have uh, you know you have some food inside an insulated bag it's the same thing you know and I think you can you can uh, do better on tips so the goal is to make uh, roughly what they're making here it's about uh, 500 Canadian a week just maybe working like I don't know 15 hours a week so if I could do that that would totally solve all my problems my mortgage is paid actually by YouTube and then this would this uh, delivery would pay for my car for my condo fees you know my uh, condo insurance car insurance that's all I need you know I don't want to work full-time oh and plus I'm getting these uh, photography gigs right and so I thought that would that lady would disappear but no wow so tomorrow I'm getting $75 man I should probably buy some stock with it or something I don't know but no I like seriously I don't care about money for photography at this point I just want to have some uh, real you know for hire photographer experience because then I can post it on my Instagram and imagine like that next one right the uh, stampede I'm getting paid 200 bucks a day for two days that's already way better than you know food delivery right because I'm not burning any gas except of course I have to drive down there I think there's someone near downtown Calgary but that's what I would love to do you know do some freight brokerage do some uh, equipment you know buy and sell of course I, I'm never gonna buy a forklift uh, 2,500 miles away if I buy any kind of equipment for resale I'll buy it here in Alberta and then bring it to Calgary so I can do view showings and people can do viewings of the equipment and then of course you know like a couple of evenings or two three evenings uh, a week uh, food delivery and then photography services you know so I think I'm gonna be okay thanks for watching Hi, this is uh, Sergey Drachev. Uh, my phone number is four zero. Uh, yeah, I'm still waiting for my document verification. I uploaded everything, and you guys are still having trouble with my driver abstract. And it, it's a one-page document with I don't know four lines of text. And um, I, I'm trying to find out if there's any way I can help you. You know, process it quicker. Thank you so much for letting us know about your country. And for me to make sure that uh, we are on the same page, uh, you are calling in. It's because uh, uh, you are waiting for the approval of your driver's abstract document. No, can it be? Can it be an issue that you know? I actually, uh, I lived in Ontario. I lived in Ontario before, and then I moved to Alberta in October twenty-two. Right, and that's why my driver's abstract only shows uh, driving record starting on uh, October 27th. So I also have a Ontario driver's abstract, Ontario, Canada, that I can upload if that can help. So uh, by the way, sir, um, for me to uh, check the status of your um, account since you're asking about the dri your driver's abstract. Yeah. So, um, so um, by the way, before we start, sir, uh, may I have your full name, your phone number, and your uh, date of birth, please? Uh, it's uh, January. Okay, so thank you so much, uh, sir, for giving those information and um, for me to check the status of your uh, driver's abstract. Um, is it okay with you if uh, I will place this call and hold for about one to two minutes? Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you so much, uh, sir. And I'll just stand the line. One moment, please. Okay. And uh, we do really appreciate and that. Yeah. All right. Uh, by the way, sir, upon checking the status of your uh, driver uh, abstract, I can confirm here that you already approved that and um, it is still unpending. So uh, kindly wait, sir. 
uh, with the uh, response of our internal team because we aim uh, this document to review within uh, two hours from the time that you are uploaded. So, kindly check your uh, email from time to time, sir. So, once your uh, document is already approved, um, that's the time that they will uh, inform you through your email. Okay. All right. Cool. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. And is there anything else, sir? Not at this time because everything else was approved. It's just this uh, driver's app search is the last obstacle, right? So I'm, I'm ready to work, but unfortunately I have to wait till it's done, right? Mm. So uh, once again, sir, thank you so much. So are we good now, sir? Or any, is there any concern? No, nothing else. Thank you for your help. Have a good day. Oh. You're, well, you're welcome, sir. And thank you so much for calling up your support. Have a nice day, sir. And please drive safety always. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Man. two hours what two hours you know I submitted this um, it still says yeah required actions uh, what is it say? get online when resolved your documents are being reviewed and, <laughs> and what's like I said what's amazing is that it's a it's a one-page document with zero violations and zero tickets not suspended and they're reviewing it like you know you want my Ontario you want my Ontario driver's life uh, driver's license I mean uh, abstract like me no I have all the paperwork right I gave you all my documents my passport and but so yeah so now I'm just I'm probably gonna start with uh, DoorDash since I'm already approved over there, let me just see what's happening here with this bag. Okay, 10.44 a.m. My insulated brand new uh, high quality uh, made in China bag is out for delivery. Hold on, I got some kind of a notification from Uber driver. Your conversation with Uber. Uh, what do you want me to do? How satisfied are you with the support you received? I'm not satisfied because it takes forever. Where can we improve? Wait time was too long. Don't agree with outcome. Agent could not help with my issue. Problem with Uber app. Agent was unprofessional. I really want to hit that one agent was unprofessional but it looks like they are somewhere in philippines because she says thank you sir for patiently waiting you know like who talks like that you know so it's you must be in philippines or india i would just say agent could not help with my issue but i mean <laughs> That just shows you that, you know, in in America, U.S. or Canada, things are not easy, right? So um, you have to jump through so many hoops, you know, to even get to something like this, like deliver pizzas and, you know, and kebabs and coffee with your own car. So it just takes forever. But at, at least, like I said, at least... Uh, it looks like I'm totally signed up with the uh, DoorDash. And as soon as I get my uh, insulated bag, sometime, what is it, uh, 1.29 p.m.? Yeah, I should get it probably before 5. And then tomorrow I'm going to go and uh, have a quick uh, brunch at 11. And then 11.30, I'm just going to try. Like, honestly, seriously, I'm really intrigued by this whole business of uh, food delivery but from what i've heard you know like compared to being a freight broker where most people look at you as, as a parasite you know middleman you're just skimming off the top you know when you do food delivery you make people happy like honestly i i believe in that because when I order food with, let's say, Uber Eats, that's what I use myself, 
I don't, I'm always happy to see the guy, right? Because I'm hungry. Here's a guy coming up with my own food in his little plastic bag. Or uh, here in Canada, at least in Alberta, I'm not sure about other parts of Canada, but you can order um, uh, alcohol, right? So, I, and I remember it was uh, some kind of a big holiday, so all stores were closed and i was a bit tipsy so i didn't want to drive my own vehicle so i called the uh, uber eats and i ordered a bottle of wine and the guy checked my driver's license so you can you can probably guess that i was super happy to see that guy <laughs> and, uh, and so that's some of the accounts i see online is that you know this uber eats and doordash drivers are reporting that you know they like to make people happy Right. And usually you make people happy uh, when you deliver food, right? And so I think it's a decent job. You know, basically it doesn't matter what you do as long as you uh, do it legally and, you know, you're willing to, to be professional and stuff like that. So uh, I, I don't know. Basically, I'm really looking forward to this next, next chapter in my life. And speaking of which, I just got a message here from uh, Nicole. That's the lady who's hiring me for the stampede. Hey, Serge, just want to confirm that you're all still good to photograph the events next week. And the absolute, absolutely. You, you can count, absolutely, you can count on me just uh, advice where and when okay so that's happening um uh, july 11th and july uh, 13th so i really think you know i really hope that this part-time photography business will take off because i do have some photography skills uh, I sold a few photos right from my websites so I know I have a good eye for photography you know I'm a creative type of guy so that would be I like ideal if I could be if I could do photography and video for a living but definitely that's you know it's not gonna be on a daily basis but still it would be super nice if I can ramp up you know these orders where people hire me and then I can do a couple of you know food deliveries and then I can buy and sell you know some equipment and then I, yeah I'm thinking like September September I'm gonna register my uh, broker uh, MC number in the States and I'll be doing some uh, some uh, logistics you know under my own name actually my company is called uh, heavy equipment logistics right so it's like i pay 30 bucks to register that like as a sole pr pr proprietorship so it's all legit so all i need is the mc number in the states and uh, proof of insurance and uh, subscription to a load board uh, i hate load link but unfortunately that's where all the indian carriers are but I'll probably just stick to truckstop.com because it's way cheaper and the drivers are usually much more professional than uh, on LoadLink. So basically that's it. Bye bye the big logistics company. Hello Freedom. Oh and one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, like you, were guy, you guys were saying about you know like delivery videos stuff like that some people we're happy to see me driving and what I what I want to do is I want to do a kind of like a POV uh, driving video just to show you kind of like a day in life of a you know Uber Eats or DoorDash driver right so just I'll show you how I'm driving uh, where what and where I'm picking up kind of like you know what food people are ordering and just then on the screen on my smartphone I can see how much money I've made from each delivery you know 
I think it could be interesting, you know. So uh, you tell me, just comment down below. But that's what I got. Like, that's what I have to play with. I don't want to get into commercial um, class license because I don't want to do medicals every two years. They're just BS. And so it's either this or Amazon delivery. I think Amazon is the only company that does not require uh, class four in Alberta to deliver the packages but you know somebody told me that if, if you go with Amazon and yeah it's it's their own vehicle right they give you their own vehicle but they're gonna be on you they're tracking you right so you cannot take a piss or buy a coffee without them knowing it and they're tracking you they're pushing you like every day and it's like 12 hour shifts it's just crazy you know like whereas here like I feel like working okay 11 o'clock I turn my online status on let me get some food delivery orders I try Uber X I mean Uber Eats uh, doesn't work okay I switch to DoorDash and then I come back at 5 p.m. in the evening and do a few more deliveries like I don't know I just I just like the freedom so again I'm kind of like an owner operator you know self-employed pretty much very close to what I wanted to do as a, as a kid a taxi cab driver except there's no people there's zero people in the car 